Welcome back um, uh, in a step uh, to make uh, coordination and cooperation between uh, um, uh, Egyptian scientists abroad and uh, uh, and uh, Egyptian uh, uh, scientists here uh, in Egypt. Uh, um, the cooperation came between the ministries of uh, migration and the public uh, business sector, uh, trade and industry. Uh, in the second uh, virtual uh, dialogue seminar uh, was held in uh, a series of uh, seminars uh, for the Egypt Can Industry uh, Conference, uh, which uh, aims uh, to discuss the future of textile and uh, industry in Egypt within uh, the framework of uh, the interest uh, paid uh, by the political leadership in this uh, field. And to shed more light on uh, this, we have the pleasure to have uh, this phone with Dr. Mohammed Burham, nuclear engineering expert in the United States of America. Welcome, Dr. Burhan. Thank you so much for the introduction, Ms. Salah, and I am here with you. Um, Dr. Burhan, um, uh, how do you see the importance of uh, the conference of um, oh, this seminar uh, held by Egypt Can uh, Conference for uh, Industry uh, in uh, a step to uh, make communication uh, between uh, uh, Egyptian scientists abroad and Egyptian scientists here in Egypt? This is very uh, amazing and a uh, well-directed uh, and well-conducted uh, uh, interviews and uh, communication. And thanks uh, to uh, you know, Her Excellency, um, you know, uh, Wazira, you know, Minister Nabila, for arranging and making all of this to happen with other ministers and uh, also people from private industry and people from the government. This is a very important event, and I wish that we continue all our communication uh, in order to uh, get back the textile industry specifically to its leadership worldwide. Yes, yes, uh, Dr. Burhan, you were uh, one of uh, three Egyptian scientists uh, 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 speaking in this uh, uh, speakers uh, at this conference, uh, and you have mentioned uh, that. Uh, um, there are many things to be um, uh, done uh, concerning the textile, uh, uh, the Egyptian uh, te industry of uh, textile, as for example, um, uh, choosing materials that could not um, uh, attract or collect insects, for example. Could you uh, just uh, explain uh, uh, for us? This is, in fact, one of the most amazing work that has been done uh, through the past, uh, let us say, more than 15 years ago or maybe 18 years ago, when uh, we start looking into adopting the technique of the plasma. And by the way, the plasma here is called the blood plasma. It is the gaseous plasma, the fourth state of matter, in which we can, you know, uh, uh, adopt the plasma to modify the, you know, textile surface and to embed and the graph with agents that can provide many functionalities. One of the functionality can be, uh, you know, insect retarding. Another functionality can be skin retardant. Another functionality can be, you know, antimicrobial. Uh, another one can be uh, fire retardant. So all of these can functionalize the size to uh, a technical level that supply and adopt the traditional ways. This is the fact that the power consumption needed for this technology is low, is not high, and that there is no wet chemistry into it. So there is no need for water, and thus it is a dry heat, and it has been very successful in many of the experiments that we conducted over the years. Yes, uh, uh, Dr. Burhan, can we say that uh, the atomic uh, energy plays a big role in the textile uh, industry? And could you shed the more light and explain more in this uh, point? Here, we, when we say atomic energy, we are generalizing, uh, uh, you know, Hala. Atomic yes. energy does include a lot of techniques. It does include gamma rays, it does include neutrons, it does include plasma. 
So when I say a gaseous plasma, it is thought to of be atomic energy techniques because we depend on having a gaseous shape that will allow all of the interior atoms to open up and to interact with the surface of the material of interest. And of course, textiles is our main objective for this specific meeting. Yes. So, uh, Dr. Burham, um, uh, Egypt has a long history uh, and a long, uh, great uh, uh, reputation uh, of uh, the Egyptian uh, uh, cotton. So, how can we get benefit of this? You know, Hala, that the Egyptian cotton is the, the best cotton. The best and around the world, yes. And, for example, for shopping, and I wanted to, to buy a shirt, for example. And then I see that on the shirt there is a label saying, you know, made with Egyptian cotton. But it is made in Bangladesh or it is made in India, which means that our cotton is still the best. And it is not, you know, supported to other countries to do the fabrication and the production. And so we need to bring the respect such to that when I go and buy, I see that, you know, the label is made in Egypt with Egyptian cotton. We can get this back. And, of course, in the meeting that it was with Dr. Nabila and, the, you know, the other, uh, you know, uh, personnel, it was indicated that there is, you know, a new uh, complex for uh, textiles in Egypt. And this complex has the state-of-the-art, uh, you know, uh, equipment, and uh, this will be a, a very good progress towards uh, reinvigorating the textile industry to go back to what it was in the 80s, where Egypt was a major exporter, not only for raw cotton, but also for fabrics. And, you know, from Mahalla El Padra to Rafa Dawar, you know, this will be actually a new, uh, you know, I, I think it's a new in in the uh, applicability of Egypt to go back into its leadership in the uh, textiles based on the Egyptian cotton. Yes, uh, I thank you very much for your time and for your valuable information, Dr. Mohammed Burham, nuclear engineering expert at the United States of America. Thank you very much for joining uh, us over the phone from the States uh, today. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is a short break and I'm going to be back with you.